so I've been getting my garden ready and I wanted to show you guys a little update. So the house that we're renting has this cute little greenhouse, which I plan on getting more use out of here soon. But I got to figure out a way to kind of clean up the roof a little bit because it's really dingy. I cleaned out these uh, tracks here. They were filled with moss. Uh, so I got that cleaned up, but I got to clean off the top a little bit, which is going to be a little tricky because those little speckles you see, those dots, those are actual holes in this plastic here. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that cleaned off, but I would like to. So what I've planted so far is a bed full of garlic. Haha, <laughs> and they're sprouting. And it looks really cool. Super not impressive right now. But that's okay. I've been slowly adding clothes to this as they uh, start to uh, sprout out in my kitchen. Uh, so yeah, I've just planted garlic that I got from the store. So we'll see how that goes. And then um, over here are a couple of strawberry plants that were left here from someone previously. So I've been keeping up with watering these guys. Hopefully we'll get some strawberries this year. Um, and then this raised garden bed over here, I haven't cleared out yet. It's filled with these really pretty purple flowers. Um, but I haven't cleared it out yet because I'm not ready to plant in it. And I figured why not uh, let the bees come by and enjoy these flowers while they're still here before I put out uh, tomatoes and bell peppers and whatever else I'm planting. So, so that's what I have. Uh, that's what I have going so far. Garlic. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia, and this is my podcast about all the crafty things that I like to do. So welcome if you're a new viewer and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. So today is Monday, March 23rd of 2020 and I am joined with my, um, joined by my co-host, our four-legged co-host here, Marjorie. Uh, Marjorie is our black Labrador. Um, and I had someone ask about Marjorie. Marjorie, you want to look at the camera? That's a no. She wants to look out the sliding doors over there. <laughs> uh, Marjorie is primarily a Labrador, but uh, she's actually a mutt, and we don't know what she is mixed with. Uh, we purchased her from... Um, a lady in our community when we were living in Texas who um, her dog was pregnant and she didn't know which dog had impregnated her dog. Uh, she assumed it was one of the neighbor dogs or a stray dog uh, that had come into the yard. Um, so we don't know what she's actually mixed with. Um, our first vet guessed that maybe it was great Pyrenees that she was mixed with, but we don't know for sure, do we? Nope. But her mama is a Labrador, uh, so, and she mostly looks like a Labrador. Don't you, girl? Yes, you do. Uh, so yeah, hopefully she'll stick around for this episode. We're just snuggling on the couch. So today I'm coming to you from our living room, and in this little, uh, I guess you could call it a townhouse that we're renting. It's a duplex, um, but it's just the right size for Mike and I. It's three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Um, well, I guess one and a half bathroom because this downstairs bathroom does not have a shower or bathtub in it. It's just a toilet and a sink, but I think it makes sense to have one shower for just the two of us. But two toilets comes in handy, doesn't it? Oh, is that too much information? Okay. 
Um, yeah, so I have the house to myself for a couple of hours, so I'm filming from the living room. The lighting is just perfect in here. Um, and you can see the blanket that I've been working on. So, um, let me just catch you guys up on what I've been working on. So one of the big things I've been working on this week, and yes, it has only been one week. Marjorie likes to smell my yarn. <laughs> um, one of the main things I've been working on this week is our knit along sock. So the D Hart House Sock Cal is currently underway. It started on March 20th, which was Friday, and will continue all the way through April 30th. And you do not have to finish your pair of socks to uh, be eligible for a prize. All you have to do is participate, um, which means you can participate in the Ravelry group, D Hard House podcast group, which is linked down below in the description box for your convenience. Uh, that is one way to participate is to post there. And another way is to post on Instagram using the hashtag DHSockCal2020. Uh, and I will be giving away two prizes, one to uh, a Ravelry winner and one to an Instagram winner. So feel free to participate both ways. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I just finished recording the video to um, show how to work the leg of the sock. By the way, um, to access the tutorial videos for the knit along, you have to have the pattern. And so as I'm creating those tutorial videos, I'm updating the pattern with those video links. The pattern only costs one US dollar. And um, you get all of these video tutorials included with it. So you do have to buy that pattern to have access to the videos. Uh, but I only made it one US dollar so that hopefully that's very affordable for everyone. So yeah, that's the progress I have made so far. I think tomorrow I will be filming the short row heel video. Um, so that's one of the main things I've been working on. By the way, the pattern name is Waxing and Waning and you can find that on the D Hard House Designs page on Ravelry, which I will also link down below in the description box for your convenience. Okay, so that's um, my first work in progress. This is the second sock. Um, I knit through the first one to make sure that the pattern worked and so I could show a finished picture of what the pattern would look like. And I'm knitting this second sock uh, to create the tutorial videos, so yeah. That's the first work in progress. And the second work in progress is another sock. Uh, this is um, I'm making this pair of socks for my dad. Uh, and this is the second sock. The first sock is finished. So I'm currently in the heel. I have finished the heel flap. And I just finished the heel turn this morning on the treadmill, which is a little challenging, but, but I did it. Uh, and now I'm to the point where I'm going to be going around and picking up stitches for the gusset and be doing those decreases. So um, the yarn I'm using for this is Patton's Croy, uh, which is definitely one of my favorite sock yarns. Uh, I've been knitting socks for about three years now, and um, this has really held up. Uh, socks for me and socks for my husband. Uh, we've been wearing them a lot, and the Patton's Croy sock yarn is just really super durable, and I just love the way it feels. So, so I thought I'd knit a pair for my dad. Uh, what is this colorway called? I think it's gray brown marl, uh, but I'm not sure. I'll have it um, linked in my project page for this, but it's a self-striping ball of yarn. And you know what's funny is I, um, this ball of yarn I had in my stash 
And I knew I would need two balls to be able to knit dad a full pair of socks, like not shorty socks, but socks with a decent leg on it. Um, so I used a coupon for 60% off a single item at Joann's. Uh, and so I bought a ball of yarn in this color so I could make him a pair of socks. And my intent was to reverse the order of the stripes on this second sock. So I was all ready to like wind this ball on my ball winder so I could reverse the order of the stripes. But this second ball already had the stripes in the reverse order. So I didn't have to do that, which was really cool. But um, definitely something I wasn't totally aware of with store-bought self-striping yarn is I just assumed that they would be wound the same way every time, but I guess not, right? So something to be mindful of if you knit self-striping yarn, uh, if you're trying to pay attention to the order of the stripes, um, don't count on balls of yarn being wound the same way every time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so two socks in progress. And the other thing I've really been spending most of my time working on is this blanket. So, uh, <laughs> I knit a 16 by 16 square. Uh, so, um, 16 squares, like each of these blocks of color on here. So 16 squares by 16 squares, which is 256 squares. Uh, and I had finished that. And then I decided I was going to add a few more rows to opposite sides to turn it into a rectangle and have it be long enough to cover a full grown adult person. Uh, so I originally thought I was going to add two rows to each end and that's just barely long enough to cover Michael from head to toe. Um, so I'm going to add three rows uh, to each side. So that's six more rows to put on and I have finished three of those rows. So I'm halfway finished with that. Uh, which is insane. So, um, yeah, so I'm really excited. I want to finish this. I really want to finish this uh, because the intent is that this will become Michael's blanket um, for sleeping. So uh, I hog the covers quite a lot when I'm sleeping. I am a toss and turn, roly poly, wrapped in a burrito kind of sleeper. Uh, so, <laughs> so I cannot be trusted to share blankets with people. So, uh, so Mike and I use separate blankets, uh, <laughs> because I'm, I'm horrible. I'm absolutely horrible. Um, so this will become his blanket. And then of course I have a pattern that I've just picked out uh, in mind for my for a blanket for me, uh, so we can have sort of coordinating blankets, but they're not matchy matchy. That is right. <laughs> um, so I will share that pattern with you next time that I have picked out because I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's going to be a crochet pattern instead of knitting, and I haven't done crochet in a while. And I was a crocheter long before I was a knitter, so it'll be nice to have a crochet project again. Um, but yeah, so I have successfully put on three rows that are 16 squares long each. And I'm trying to do the math in my head. That's what, 48 squares? Yep, 48 squares. So I just have 48 more to go and then this thing will be finished. And we decided not to put a border around it. So when I finish those 48 squares, that will be it. This thing will be finished and it will count for so much yardage this year, which is going to be fantastic. <laughs> so that's the plan. But yeah, I've spent uh, most of my time this week working on this blanket. 
which has been very cozy and uh, because it's uh, springtime it's I, I feel like it's like my mood and everything feels very springtime I feel very refreshed and excited and rejuvenated uh, and there's definitely been more sunlight and some warmer days here and um, we're trying to save money on our heat and our heat is electric heat and our electric bill uh, is uh, every two months is when they give it to us and so those two winter months that bill was huge and so <laughs> we're trying to be a little bit more conscious of how much energy we're using so like all the lights are off in the house I just have the the blinds are open letting in the natural light we don't have the heater on like I'm just gonna wear a sweater in the house uh, if I'm feeling a little cool and just trying to be a little more conscious of saving energy which also helps to save money and um, that's something that we're trying to do where was I going with that I don't know oh that it's been nice to cozy up under the blanket because I have been getting a little bit chilly with the heater off so it's been nice to work on but when summer gets here I'm not going to want to drape a big blanket over my lap to knit on because I will be too warm so I really want to finish this thing uh, before that happens yeah <laughs> what else do I want to talk about oh yes so um life has been pretty good this past week uh we found out so we are officially on spring break this is our originally scheduled spring break spring break week um starting I guess it's technically started on Saturday, um, but I gave my final exams remotely, um, sending the test to my students and proctoring them and getting all of that set up. Uh, and so we just heard news that um, our school is going to be fully online for the rest of the school year so it's been very up in the air with well let's just plan on finishing this quarter online and then we'll see where it goes from there and then we were told we're definitely going to start the first four weeks online next quarter which does make it really difficult when you have to tr transition the, that modality halfway through or whatever. It, it just adds this extra awkward element of trying to maintain a schedule, maintain consistency, maintain this is our mode of communication, and then just having to switch it uh, is, it just adds this extra challenge that doesn't, doesn't need to be there. So I was actually really happy that our administrators told us, you know what, we're just going to go online for the rest of the school year, mm. this, this whole spring quarter. Um, and then that way we don't have to wait for if and when we're going to be allowed to hold classes on campus again. So I just get to, now I just know for sure that we're just online the whole time and now I can plan, um, a schedule based around that that will make sense for an online class so that makes me feel a lot better um just knowing the plan uh relieves so much so much stress i mean we're online the whole time which means i have to make so many videos about math <laughs> uh but i know that now and so uh, so I'll be spending this spring break making knitting videos and also math videos and it will be very, uh, very video eccentric. Lots of recording that's going to be going on in this house. So I know it's going to be very boring for you. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, so that's what's going on here. Um, we are, I guess, technically practicing our social distancing. Uh, we're mostly staying in the house or in our own backyard. Um, we just went for a walk this morning, just down the street and back, um, which we usually don't do because we live on a very hilly street, which isn't uncommon in this area. Uh, and this hilly street has no sidewalk um, and it barely even has a shoulder in some of the places. And so it's um, not the safest road to be walking on, especially when you have a dog that doesn't like noisy vehicles and wants to lunge at them. So, uh, but we got to walk in this morning before... Um, before too much traffic and so we're we're getting out and enjoying the fresh air but trying not to add to some of the problems with uh trailheads being overcrowded um beaches and touristy spots and so we're just trying to be kind of mindful about that which is a little challenging when it's like, well, I think this spot will be empty and then we drive there and it's not. And so, well, well maybe this spot will be empty and we drive there and it's not. And so <laughs> uh, I got to be able to walk my dog somehow. So, uh, so we tried that this morning. It was pretty good. Marjorie's sufficiently tired out for a nap now, which is good. Um, but yeah, that's what's, that's what's going on in the D Hart house. So if you haven't already joined in the knit along, you have not missed much. Um, the materials list video is up for everyone to watch on the channel. So if you're curious about what you might need, you can check out that video. And then, um, if you haven't already purchased the waxing and waning pattern on Ravelry, you can still do that totally. Uh, and it includes the video links to the tutorial videos. And so what I'm doing is as I create those videos, I'm updating the pattern to include those links. So the pattern is not complete right now. I am updating it as we go and I'm trying to do that every two or three days. Excuse me. <laughs> so some of you that are very, uh, quick knitters. Hopefully I'm not holding you back too much. Uh, and those of you who maybe aren't as quick of knitters, um, the content will be there for you when you're ready for it, which is good. So, all right. I think that's all I have to say for this week's episode. I am going to, um, edit this and probably sit down and do more knitting on this blanket because you guys I just have 48 squares to do which is awesome considering I've put like 300 on there I just have 48 it's gonna feel so good to finish that okay I'm gonna stop talking about it and actually do it so I will see you guys later. Have a good week, weekend, happy crafting, stay safe, and I will see you next week. Bye. I always forget to talk about what I'm wearing in these videos. I know, it's not nice. <laughs> I am wearing hand knits today. Uh, this is the brick sweater. Uh, I knit this out of some yarn from Hobby Lobby, uh, Yarn B, and the color is Tobacco, and it's this gorgeous golden, brown, yellow, just, I just love it. I know it's spring right now, but it's so a fall color in my mind, uh, but it's a little chilly in the house and I wanted to put a sweater on. Uh, especially for the podcast. So yeah, this is my brick sweater. It's, um, it's a top down raglan. Uh, I did tubular bind offs. Um, 
on all the, the parts that have bind offs. It was a very easy pattern to follow. Um, and I just love this sweater. It's very comfy cozy. Um, I did make it with a little bit of positive ease so it just fits very nicely. Um, and yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. And I love this sweater and oh yeah, it's um, worsted weight, worsted weight yarn uh, for this pattern. So it was a very quick knit as well. So yep, that's what I'm wearing. <laughs>